How's it going there, YouTube? This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is Triple T Terminal Tip Tuesday. Well, actually, for me, it's Monday, but I guess for you, it's Tuesday. And the reason I upload videos on Tuesday, and the reason I've done Terminal Tip Tuesday, is because Tuesday is a very busy day for me in the week. I have lots of music lessons and a bunch of other stuff, and I can't really do a full-on hands-on review, because that takes a lot more work than just throwing up a camera, throwing down this, and then I lace them together and upload it. Also, the other reason is the Black Ops multiplayer maps come out today. So pretty much when I'm not at a music lesson, I'll be playing that. So honestly, I have no time for you guys. So I'm just kidding. It's Monday and it's Terminal Tip Tuesday. And today we have a very cool, very useful terminal tip. And it's not really something that's a hidden gem or something that will increase your workflow. Rather, it is something that fixes what Apple hasn't for years. Now if you run Snow Leopard, you may have noticed that there's a bunch of other applications rather than just iTunes that uses the hotkeys above F7, F8, and F9. They're the backwards key, the forward key, and the play key. They're really awesome, I really like them, and they're really fantastic. In Leopard they worked great, in Tiger they worked great, and uh, the problem with Snow Leopard is when you press one of these keys, it automatically opens iTunes. There's no way to disable this in menus or anywhere else. That's just how it happens. Apple has acknowledged this as a bug, but it's been a bug since December of 2008, and Apple has refused to fix it. So we need to take matters into our own hands and fix what Apple has told us we can. So if you don't still understand the point of the problem, let's say I'm listening to The Path of Dreams, which is my favorite royalty-free soundtrack. Um, if we open it in VLC or in capo or in compressor or a bunch of other compressor doesn't count, but in a bunch of other applications that use these hotkeys, I mean there's countless ones, Spotify, Songbird, uh, VLC, Movist, what else? There's um, honestly there's countless applications. Photo editing applications use them. Uh, there's so many different applications. Ableton Live uses these hotkeys, even Apple's own GarageBand. But unless it is an Apple application like GarageBand or like iMovie or like QuickTime Player, it's going to open iTunes every single time. And that can become really irritating. So, if you don't still understand the problem, here's a little demo. Sorry about that. We're playing our favorite song. Wow, everything just went haywire. Okay, so we're playing our favorite song, great. Let's say we're working on a text document and we want to open the file. We press play and that stops in VLC player because this responds to the commands, but then iTunes opens. We don't want iTunes open because then when we press play again to resume our song in VLC, iTunes is gonna start as well. That's not good. So we need to get rid of iTunes altogether. And I don't mean delete it from our computer, but I mean disable it when these different applications are open. So below, and what we're gonna to need to use is a uh, Python script. So you're gonna find a link below, click that link, and it will download iTunes.py. Once that is downloaded, drag it to your desktop. And what this is, is a Python script. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's not a big deal, it's not that vital, but you do need to follow directions and make sure that this works. Now I could have put this file server side and just automatically downloaded it and then it'd be much easier for you. But then the problem is if you have your own application that doesn't abide by these rules, you wouldn't be able to fix that. So I've put in the eight applications or seven, I don't remember how many there are. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I put the eight in, I put the eight applications in which I use which currently are fighting or heckling with iTunes. So every single one of these applications has these hotkeys built in, but when I use them, iTunes opens. So when I put this Python script and where it needs to go, iTunes will not open if any of these applications are open. So if there's an application you want to use, let's say Capture One, and it doesn't, but let's say Capture One use these hotkeys, you'd put a comma after Alarm Clock Pro, a space, and then quotes and put Capture One put the application name and you can keep going forever and ever. You could do Tweety. Um, so you could do as many as you want. And I've done the ones that I use and the ones that I think most people will use, but if there is something else you use, you can add it to this list and you're good to go. Now, once we've added all the whitelisted applications, we need to move this Python file into the iTunes subdirectory. So we are going to need to use terminal to get this up. You open terminal and uh, we're gonna need to type the following commands. CD space applications slash iTunes app. So we're just currently specifying the path from within inside iTunes.app, from within the contents, there's a folder called contents. 
and then there's another folder called Mac capital OS. Now what you're going to do after this is press enter. Looks like nothing happened, but it did. The path has been set, and now Terminal knows where to put this file. Now we need to type sudo, and sudo essentially is administrative access, so you will need to enter your password. Don't worry, it's not like it's sending me your vital information. It's just telling your computer, I'm the administrator, I have the rights to this computer, and do what I tell you to do. Okay? So we're going to type sudo dot, or sudo space mv space itunes space itunes with an X right next to it. No space after the iTunes X, just iTunes X. You're going to press enter and now it prompts you for your administrative password. You need to type it correctly and I don't believe that I did. Oh, I did. I'm good. Um, now you're going to type sudo again administrative access mv and now you need to specify the path now the path on the desktop is users and then your name and then desktop so you can find this by clicking get info if you right click the file or you can go to finder and get info or you can press command i now if you look right here it'll tell you where it is now this is the path and you need to copy and paste this so we're going to copy users slash quinn slash desktop and after mv we're going to press space and then put the path this is where you need to tell iTunes to go. Now don't, you're not done yet. After desktop, you need to put the name of the file, so slash iTunes.py. And this tells Terminal, hey, put this folder in the iTunes folder. So now we're going to post space and then iTunes. Okay. It moves that file, it's gone from the desktop, and now it's from within, it's inside the iTunes app. So now we need to activate it. We're going to type sudo chown root colon admin iTunes. By the way, all of this code is below. You have to copy and paste one line at a time, but it's easy. Once I mean, you can type it out if you want, or you can copy and paste it, and that's what I'd recommend. You're going to press enter. Again, doesn't look like anything happened, but it does, and then we need to rewrite the permissions, so we type sudo chmod space 0755 and then space iTunes. Now it's good. We're ready to go. So you can close terminal. Make sure iTunes is closed during that process as well as VLC or any of the other applications that use these hotkeys. Now you'll notice when we have our song open in VLC, we can press the pause button and iTunes tries to open, but it won't. You can check in console and it will, if you want to, if you want to get all geeky with me, you can check in the console and you can see that that was activated. And it's currently a little tiny script, a little tiny process that's running in the background where every time one of those applications you specified tries to open iTunes. Now, some of you may experience this error and you shouldn't, but if you do, it's not a big deal. The error or the problem that would happen was you would have rewritten over the top of an incorrect plist file or you would have rewritten the permissions incorrectly so in layman's terms iTunes refuses to open it'll just appear as a bouncing icon don't worry nothing's damaged nothing's a problem all you need to do is go to itunes.com re-download iTunes and then reinstall it from the .dmg file like I said don't worry when you reinstall all you do is reopen iTunes and everything's still there your music your playlist everything nothing's harmed nothing's damaged and uh, it shouldn't yield to be a big problem so thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and comment. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.